Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the College Essentials Q&A webinar. I'm gonna give everyone a minute or so to get on. We're so excited to have you here. I wanna first off just mention, you can say hello in the chat. Let us know that you're here and we'll get started shortly. Okay, awesome. I see some people saying hello and good morning or good evening, depending on where you are right now. We love that everybody's signing on um, and we are very excited to have you here. Um, and our intention today is to get you ready for your college experience. Um, and we have the whole college community here ready to support you. So I'm gonna get started. So again, welcome to the College Essentials Q&A webinar. We're getting you prepped for your spring 2021 um, college career. Uh, you're going to be starting on your AC day one, uh, but today you have made a wonderful first step um, in joining this webinar and getting some answers for yourself so that you're ready to go. So I'll ask for the next slide. We're just going to go through some housekeeping items. So my name is Susan Pridmore. I work for college events. Um, and uh, again, as I said before, the whole college community has come out today to really get you ready and uh, make sure that you feel supported um, in your college career. And this is a really, really great first step. So um, the few housekeeping items that I'm gonna go through, um, this is a webinar on Zoom, uh, different from a meeting, which uh, you'll learn the difference as, as you go through uh, your first few days, but in a webinar, um, you can see us and you can hear us obviously, but we can't hear you, but that doesn't mean that we're not listening. Uh, so make sure that you're putting your comments in the chat um, and then later on, we're going to have a, a formal Q&A, a, a question and answer period. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't be engaged with us the whole way through this. So as we go through the presentations, if you see something or hear something that you're not sure about, please feel free to put a question in the Q&A, okay? So at the bottom of your screen along the tab there, you'll see a little icon that says Q&A. You can put your questions in there and we're gonna to get to them as best we can and answer them as best we can. Um, if you're experiencing any difficulties, let's say your Q&A isn't working um, or your chat's not working, um, you know, you're having a, a hard time hearing, put a note in the chat function um, and then our support team, our event support team that's on here today, will try to uh, resolve that problem and, and make sure that you're getting the best experience. Um, and then the last item we just mentioned, there's going to be a QA and a um, question period at the end. So we're going to go through all of our presentations and then start the Q&A. But again, um, you know, jot down that question so you don't forget it or go ahead and put it in the Q&A and we can try to answer it um, when we can. Uh, okay, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to our, oh no, I'm going to go through the agenda first. Okay, so let's just go through this so we all know uh, what's going on today. So um, again, um, all of these are equally important. You want to make sure um, that you're paying attention throughout, jot down those questions that you have. Um, but as you can see, we're going to go um, right into orientation so you can see what that looks like um, into student support services, the registrar's office, campus services, course material services, um, students association, the International Education Center, academics, co-op, ITS, so anything technical, um, and then we'll go into the question and answer. Uh, so I appreciate that, you know, you guys are brand new to the college. Uh, you might not know what all these departments are all about, but that's exactly what you're here for today. Uh, we're going to walk you through and make sure that you have the information you need. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the next slide and uh, we're going to go take a look at orientation. So I'm going to invite Olivia to jump on and tell us a little bit about orientation next steps. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. Hi, everyone. My name is Olivia, and uh, I'm on the events team here at Algonquin. So really excited about AC Day One um, and all, all the things that are leading up to AC Day One. Um, so if after today's webinar, you still have questions or you'd like to browse more resources and really make sure that you're prepared uh, for your first day, you can check out the orientation website. And this website can be found by visiting algonquincollege.com slash orientation. And there are a ton of resources there so that you're set up for success uh, before you even start on your first day. So a really great place to start would be um, the online prep section and it has a 10 minute to do checklist. So this is a really easy, really great quick way to make sure that you've done those essential things so that you're ready. 
Uh, you can also check out the AC Startup videos. Um, those, this is a series of short videos. They're about 20 minutes each, but they cover a wide range of topics, including uh, achieving academic success, student experience, health and wellness, and much more. So you'll definitely want to check out those startup videos. On your first day, May 10th, um, be sure that you're registered for your program orientation. We will cover this a little bit later in the presentations. This is where you meet your program coordinator um, or faculty members and even classmates. And aside from program orientation, the rest of the day is up to you on AC Day 1. So we have some really fun virtual activities planned for you to relax, kind of connect with your community, maybe make some new friends. Uh, so we have everything from live music, live music, sorry, in the chill zone from local artists um, to bullet journaling and manifestation. So there's a lot of really great programming for you. So you can sign up for AC Day 1 on the orientation website now to build out your schedule for the day and your classes resume at 1 p.m. on May 10th. So you have the morning to yourself and then starting at 1 p.m. it's your regular schedule. So I'm going to hand it back over to Susan um, to introduce our first speaker. Perfect. Thanks so much Liv. Um, and just to add to that uh, we want to make sure you guys know obviously there's a lot of information coming at you. Um, this will be posted on that orientation site that Liv just shared with us um, and again um, our services can add any links in the chat that you might be looking for, um, but make sure that you get to that orientation website because all the information is going to be there that you need. So no stress, we're gonna go through this. Uh, you're gonna you know, hear um, quite a bit of information, um, but uh, you can always review once you go to the orientation site. So I'm going to come to our first presenter um, for student support services. I'm going to pass it over to Martha Marr. Hi, Martha, go ahead, please. Good morning, everyone. Very pleased to be with you today. Um, I myself have taken several programs at Algonquin College and uh, I have found them all beneficial to my career. I've taken project management, lean certification and teaching adult lifelong learners. So you're in good hands. You've made a good choice to come to Algonquin College. Next slide. So for student support services, it's, it's a broad range of services to help you to succeed at Algonquin College. Um, but the first point we wanna make is, we bet that you never expected to start college or your post-secondary journey in a pandemic. Um, and we just want to reassure you that every support and service that you would have had if we were on campus is available to you remotely and virtually. So all of the services at Algonquin College, um, you can access from wherever you are. Next slide, please. These are some of the services included in student sports services. Many of them are very unique. I'm gonna talk in depth about the ones that um, you should be uh, accessing uh, sooner rather than later if that's a support that you need. But some of the really unique things that we have at Algonquin College is stuff like Project Lighthouse and the Umbrella Project. Project Lighthouse is uh, a program that um, helps to make sure that the campus is safe and that um, sexual violence is, uh, is prevented. Um, at Algonquin College and they have all kinds of really fun events and crafting and all kinds of things and while you're doing those things they will teach you some skills in ensuring that our campus is a safe campus. The, the umbrella project is all things harm reduction so we know that uh, students are vulnerable to using substances and again this project will engage you in all kinds of fun activities while teaching you the skills to stay, to stay safe when it comes to alcohol and drug use. Um, so those are some very unique programs that we have at the college. Um, next slide, please. So one of the services that uh, if you are somebody who needs accessible support uh, during your college journey, my message to you is engage with that service sooner rather than later. Get in touch with them as soon as you can if this is a service that you need. Often what students will ask about this is, you know, when I was in high school or my previous learning, I had accommodations to my academics. 
Um, if that is the case for you, those accommodations can be adapted at Algonquin College. And the first step is to call the Welcome Center and get an appointment with a learning strategist. Um, and they will help you to get a personal individual plan for your accommodations. Next slide, please. Counseling services. This is another one that is, is very often accessed by students. And right now during a pandemic, mental health is just an increasing concern for all students. Um, and so counseling services is a very busy service. It is there for you. They have three streams. Um, so you can uh, apply for uh, a counseling session if you need some academic support. You can apply for counseling services if you're having some career um, counseling, career clarity kind of struggles. You've started a program and you found that it's it might not be for you or you're just not sure what program you want to take uh, at your post-secondary journey. So you can uh, engage with counseling services and they'll help you to sort that out. And then the most important of all is you can apply for uh, counseling services uh, in the area of mental health, any kind, any kind of stress that you're experiencing in, during your time at Algonquin College that may be getting in your way of success, um, counseling services is there for you. And you'll see on the side a list of some of the things that they will provide counseling for. Next slide, please. Aspire AC. Uh, so this is a program for students who uh, may not be a traditional learner. They may come from low socioeconomic areas where other people are not going to post-secondary. They may have grown up in the care of the, of the province. Um, they might be newcomers to Canada. Um, all kinds of uh, demographics that are supported by Aspire AC and will help you to be ready for college will help you get there and will help you to stay in college with various supports as you see on the side there. Next slide, please. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions at all, put them in the Q&A and I'll try to get to them throughout the rest of this uh, webinar. Thanks, Susan. Excellent, thank you, Martha. Okay, some great information there. Um, and again, you'll see um, in the chat, we can start adding um, links to uh, different web pages. And if you guys have questions, make sure that you're putting them in the Q and A uh, so that we are sure to see them and answer them during the Q and A period. Okay, excellent. So we're gonna move on to Jagan from the Registrar's Office. I'll pass it over to you. Hello, thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Jagan Sindhu and I am Algonquin College graduate as well as employee of a registrar office at Algonquin College. Thank you, next slide, please. So I'm going to try to answer all the common questions which we get at registrar office. So the most common question is how do I defer my fee? Deferring your fee is very, very important and you can do so by logging into your access account. You'll see a tab, uh, defer your fees. You'll click that tab and it will allow us to register you. Uh, for any new students, you need to pay the $250 deposit in order to defer your fee. But for returning student, you just click that tab and you're good to go. For the international student, you will need to pay your $1,200 deposit for us to defer your fee. Uh, what fees you can opt out? UPass is one of the fees you are allowed to opt out of. If you are not using your UPass, you can go visit your uh, access account and click on the UPass opt out form and uh, you can opt out of that fee. Next slide, please. How do you view your timetable? So in your access account, you will go under the view timetable and you can view your timetable. If you can't uh, see your timetable, there could be reason that you haven't defer your fee or paid your deposit. Um, your spring, time, uh, spring term timetable will be released or is already released on April 9, 2021 for most of our programs. Next slide, please. 
how you select your Janet. First of all, you will get an email from your coordinator that you need to select your Janet for your term. Once you get that email, you will log into your Access account and go under the Janet tab, and you can select your Janet courses um, before. The, and the deadline is April 4th. And if you didn't have a chance to select them, you can still go under your timetable under the drop add uh, and select courses and you can still select your general elective courses. Next step, please. Thank you. Um, if you have, uh, if you are having some difficulties and you want to withdraw from your course, you will need to speak to your program coordinator and then they will advise your registrar office. But if you are, if, if you have a problem with your program and you want to change a program or drop out of the program, you will need to speak to your program coordinator and book an appointment with your student success specialist and they will instruct you for the further instruction on how to withdraw from a program. Next slide, please. Um, how can you transfer your credits from previous studies? Um, you need to log into your Access account and you will go under the transfer of credit or exemption tab under your Access account. Internal um, tra transfer of credit in college is free, but if you are uh, transferring a credit from external college or a university, it's $10 uh, per course. And uh, all the instructions uh, is provided on your Access account. Next slide, please. How do you apply for OSAP? OSAP is Ontario Student uh, Assistant Program and it is available to all the domestic students who are residents of Ontario. Um, our great tip on the OSAP is always apply ahead of time, at least six weeks before your program or your program starts or the start of the term. Um, Anytime you can make an OSAP website, uh, OSAP portal, and you can create your profile and it will tell you how much funding you will be receiving for a full-time or a part-time program that will help you to organize yourself financially. Next slide, please. What are loans and grants? So OSAP uh, funding is consists of loans and grants. Loan is something which students have to pay back to the government, but the grants is yours to keep. But in certain scenarios, your grants can turn into loan, which means you will have to pay them back. But the things which can trigger that is if you withdraw from your program or if you have unsuccessfully did not pass few of the courses, then your grants all or some of your grants might turn into loan and then you will have to pay them back. Next slide, please. How do I pay? I have to pay a fee if I have applied for OSAP. First thing, as I suggested earlier, you should apply for your OSAP six weeks before the start of the term. Uh, it will give you an idea if you're receiving enough money to pay your tuition or fees or not. If you have an application in process, you can go to your access account and defer your fee. But if you realize that you are not getting enough OSAP funding, then you will have to pay your deposit and then you would be able to defer your fees. Next slide, please. How do I apply for bursaries? Bursary is, bursaries is a free money that you don't have to pay back, but you have to apply for it. Anytime a bursary portal is open, it, there is a link on your access account. You click on the link and fill your application. Bursaries are not guaranteed, but we always suggest our students to apply for it. Their bursaries can be depending on many situations like what program you are taking, what your financial need is. And each year we have lots of applicants apply for it. So in order to submit an application, go to your access account under the bursary portal. Next slide, please. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to the registrar office. But if you have very specific question in related to OSAP, you can contact your financial aid officer. Every program has its own uh, officer who is responsible for that program directly. And you can reach them by the link provided on the screen. If you have any questions related to bursaries, scholarships, or student awards offered at Algonquin College, uh, you can send them an email at studentawards at algonquincollege.com. Next slide, please. Um, there's many resources on um, 
in Algonquin, which you can use and can help you to be a successful uh, student at Algonquin. In any case, if you need any help, you can always reach out to the um, register office or you can email us at askus at algonquincollege.com. Um, my main tip uh, to all the students will be please monitor your student email. You will get an assigned email from Algonquin and we always provide all our updates and reminders for the fee and everything through that student email. So make sure you monitor it. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. A ton of good information in there. We know we get a lot of questions about the registrar's office. Um, so that's really helpful. And please don't forget, this presentation will be posted on the orientation site. So all those resources that Jagan just listed and those links there, you'll have access to them. Um, okay, so we're going to head on to our next speaker is Mara from Campus Services. Mara, I'll pass it over to you. Great. Thank you, Susan. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Mara Lowry from Campus Services, and I'm happy to be here today to share some information about our services and to welcome you to our Bunkum College community. I'll share an overview um, of our services and some tips, and please feel free to ask any questions, of course. Next slide, please. So uh, card services issues two cards. Um, the AC card is our student identification card. And the U-Pass is a universal transit pass that provides unlimited travel in the Ottawa and Gatineau area. If you need an AC card or a U-Pass for the spring term, you can submit a photo online at algonquincollege.com slash AC card. And um, if you uh, do need both cards, uh, the same photo is used for both. So you just uh, need to submit the one photo. And once your photo is approved, you would receive an email with information about how to get your cards. So for the Ottawa campus, um, you uh, would be invited to book an appointment for curbside pickup. And there's also an option to request to have your cards mailed to you. Any full-time spring term student um, can, uh, who's participating in remote learning may opt out of the UPASS program. And as mentioned, that form is available in access now. Next slide, please. So our campus store is where you can get your course materials, AC branded products, uh, and much more. And you can shop online 24 seven at the campus store.ca. Um, the campus store is temporarily closed for in-person shopping, but they do ship worldwide and offer curbside pickup. Um, if, and if you're a student at the Ottawa, Perth or Pembroke campuses, you can visit the campus store.ca slash book list to access a custom list of your resources. And Anna from the course materials team will be sharing a little bit more information about that. A few tips, um, uh, when you place an order for your, uh, on the campus store website, you will need to create an account um, separate from um, your network uh, login. And if you need any help at all, you can contact the campus store at campusstore.algonquincollege.com. Next slide, please. So the next few slides um, are uh, just some information for students who may um, be required to be on campus. So printing is available across campus um, at printers um, and uh, they, they can print, copy and scan. And the easiest way to print on campus is using mobility print, which allows you to print directly from your device. Next slide, please. For those who um, may be on campus and have a vehicle, uh, there are a variety of short and long-term parking options. Um, so we do have uh, monthly, annual permits, but also a lot of daily parking options that can be purchased online or via a um, app called Honk. Um, and our Ottawa campus is completely permitless. So when you uh, purchase parking, you're asked for your license plate um, and you don't receive um, a physical permit, you just uh, enter the license plate and you're good to go. Next slide, please. And if you require um, a locker, if you're on campus, you can rent lockers on access as well. Next slide, please. So for more information about these services and frequently asked questions, you can visit algonquincollege.com slash campus services, or feel free to email us at any time, or of course, ask a question. Um, and um, for many, many of these service areas as well, um, you've received an email with detailed information that should help you out. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Mara. 
Again, such useful information. We hope that everyone's absorbing this um, and uh, you're getting some of the answers that you were looking for today. So next up, we're going to speak with Anna from Course Materials. Anna, I will pass it over to you. Thanks, Susan. So my name is Anna Tenbrink and I am a Course Material representative here at Algonquin. I've been at Algonquin for about 12 years, both working and as a student, and I've completed three programs here, the Applied Museum Studies program, Archives and Records Management, as well as the Office Admin program. Next slide, please. So have you ever walked into a bookstore and been completely overwhelmed at all of the options and not even know where to begin to look for what you need? To make things a little less complicated for you and your course materials, Algonquin College has developed a tool called Booklist. Booklist is a customized list of all of the course materials that you will need for your studies, including resources identified by your instructor as being required or essential or suggested. To access your customized booklist, simply visit the campusstore.ca slash booklist. You can see that on the screen right now and you'll be asked to log in with your Algonquin College username and password. This is going to be the same login that you use for your college email account and for Brightspace. Next slide, please. This is a QR code that, when scanned, will take you directly to the book list login page. If you prefer to not use a QR code, you can go to the website at the bottom of the screen. And again, I see this has been posted in chat, so it's easy access for you. Next slide, please. Once you've logged into your book list, you're going to see a list of all of the courses that you're currently enrolled in and the resources that are attached to those courses. If you see an image that says no book required, that means you do not have a textbook to purchase for that course. If there are course materials needed for your class, they're going to look similar to the example I have on the screen. Each course will list the course code, the course title, and the resources needed. For each resource, there may be a variety of options available, all with different prices. Um, in this example, you can see that there is a physical option. This is indicated by hardback in the description. A used option, which is a physical book that has already been used by a learner, but is still in really good condition. Or a digital option. This is at the bottom called eText Alone. These three examples are the most common formats available, and you can see from it how the price points can vary. As, you, as a learner, it is your responsibility to look at the options available to you and decide what is the best one for you. If you do select any physical books, these can be mailed to you or arrangements made to pick them up on campus through curbside pickup. If you've selected any digital resources, you will have a digital receipt emailed to you with directions on how to access them. This will be going to um, the email account that you use to set up your account with connections, not necessarily your college email. Okay, the next slide, please. There are two main kinds of digital resources that instructors can use on their courses. One is a traditional e-text, which is a digital version, version of the physical book. The other one is called a publisher, publisher resource. This is an online interactive platform. Each of these resources have different ways to access them. To identify what kind of resource you have, all you need to do is look at the access code that was provided to you. Currently on the screen is an example of an e-text code called a Texidium code. This is a 10 digit numerical code. You'll need to go to the highlighted website um, at the bottom of the screen, the reader.texidium.com and create a Texidium account. This is the platform, Texidium is, that Algonquin uses to access and to read e-text. Once you have created your account, you can put in that 10-digit code into your Texidium account and redeem your resource. It is highly recommended that you install the Texidium app on your computer. This way, with the app, you can download the e-text to use offline. Can I have the next slide, please? The second kind of digital resource code you can receive is a publisher resource code. This code looks different from the e-text code because it's going to be a combination of letters and numbers or just letters. These access codes are redeemed through your course's Brightspace. 
Your instructor will provide you with clear instructions on how to redeem this. It is important to note that this information may not be on your Brightspace page until the first day of classes. This is completely normal. Can I have the next slide, please? So I know that this was a lot of information to process. I know the links have been put in the chat, but don't panic if you think you've missed something. My team and I are available to help you with any questions you have about your course materials. We can be reached at the email address on screen, cms at algonquincollege.com. And if you have any questions or need further assistance with placing an online order, my wonderful colleagues at Connections to Campus Door will be happy to help. They can be reached at the other email on your screen, campusdoor at algonquincollege.com. Next slide, please. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me today. I wish you the best of luck with your studies and remember to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna. Okay, perfect. We're rolling through here. A reminder, you can put any of the questions you have in the Q&A. We're trying to answer them as we go. Um, and just a second reminder, um, a lot of the information that you're going to be getting could possibly answer those questions. So just make sure that you're paying attention to each representative. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. We have Lauren from your Students Association. Please go ahead, Lauren. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lauren, and I'm here to tell you all about the Algonquin Students Association. Next slide, please. Our mission is to create an environment that inspires a passion for student success. Next slide, please. Our Students Association is governed by a board of directors that are full-time students across all three Algonquin College campuses. The board sets out a list of priorities each year that are high level student issues that we work on throughout the year. Some past highlights would be creating the UPASS program, developing a commitment to truth, reconciliation and indigenization and supporting and maintaining education to all. Next slide, please. Our current president is Emily Ferguson and Ellen Cotter is our vice president. The other six directors work side by side to bring student issues forward to the highest level within the college. Next slide, please. At Algonquin, we have men's and women's basketball, soccer, volleyball, and rugby as varsity sports. If you're interested in playing for any of these teams, you can always find the coaches information on our website, which we will share later, and you can contact them directly. Uh, we also have intramural sports, which are non-competitive sports that you can play with other students. Um, things like floor hockey, flag football, dodgeball, indoor soccer, and more. Next slide, please. The Algonquin Students Association puts on a number of events throughout the year, um, from large scale concerts and carnivals to smaller trivia nights. Um, right now we've been running uh, a lot of online events throughout COVID. Next slide, please. We own and operate a 20,000 square foot fitness facility on the Ottawa campus and two smaller facilities on both Perth and Pembroke. We have personal trainers, massage therapists on staff, and they're always there to help you hit your fitness and wellness goals. The fitness zone membership is free to all students. Next slide, please. The Jack Doyle Athletics and Recreation Center is the brand new building that's being built on our Ottawa campus right now. Uh, this brand new 125,000 square foot facility will have three new gyms, a rock climbing wall, bowling lanes, a wraparound running track, golf simulator, and a brand new restaurant with an outdoor patio. Next slide, please. On campus, we have two different great food and drink services. The observatory is our campus lounge. This space is licensed and provides some of the best food on campus. And we also operate a Starbucks on the Ottawa campus. Next slide, please. A great way to get involved on campus is to become a class representative. So our class reps are students from each program that bring academic concerns forward to our board of directors. We also have clubs and communities, which is another great way to be involved. Um, they're created based off any type of activity or hobby. We have all types of clubs. And the best part is, is that if you don't see a club you're interested in joining, you can always start your own. And we also have the Wellness and Equity Center. This is a space that's provided educational and social programming designed to educate students on campus. Next slide, please. 
We offer a number of different services on campus. Our food cupboard is our on-campus food bank that supplies any student with food security concerns uh, with three days of food supply. We also offer the online housing ads for any student looking for a place to live off campus. Funding can be provided for students looking to host graduation parties or to bring in guest speakers. We also oversee the health and dental plan for all full-time domestic students. This plan covers dental care, prescription care, vision care, and more. That can be found online at wespeakstudent.com. And in addition to this, we also have a number of meeting and silent study rooms on campus. Next slide, please. The Algonquin Commons Theater is our 800 person theater located on the Ottawa campus. The theater hosts a number of different types of shows from musicals, comedians, concerts, and even dance shows. Some of our past acts include Nelly, Machine Gun Kelly, Simple Plan, and more. Next slide, please. If you are a student attending our Pembroke campus, we have the fitness zone there, a two-story rock climbing wall, and a gymnasium offering the same intramural sports as Ottawa. The landing is our licensed lounge on campus that is also used as an event space. Next slide, please. And our Perth campus has free fitness center with similar services offered on the Ottawa campus. Next slide, please. Don't forget to connect with us on social. Um, we encourage you to follow us on social just to stay updated on all upcoming events and things that we have going on. So this is for the Ottawa campus. And if you go to the next slide, please. We also have our Pembroke and Perth specific accounts as well. Next slide, please. And that's it, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Lauren. Um, I was just thinking while you were doing that presentation, it's so nice to see pictures of the campus. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, who are maybe out of province or out of country even, um, Ontario is in a lockdown right now because of the pandemic. So the college is currently closed. Um, so we're all working remotely. You can see behind me, I'm, I'm at my house, um, but we're obviously still making sure that all the services are available to you. Uh, we're going to post the COVID site in the chat. Um, if you do have any more questions about, you know, what sort of campus life looks like right now and what's available and, and things like that, take a look. Um, most of everything is, is happening remotely. We mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, uh, certainly, you know, times are different and, um, and we're all adjusting accordingly and, and making sure that we're still here for you. Okay, so we are moving on to our representative from the International Education Center. Michelle, I will pass it over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Michelle. I work in the International Education Center and I have for many, many years. I recognize that there are a lot of international students joining us today who are not in Canada. So uh, all services are still available to you as well. Um, if you have questions, do reach us. This is quite important at IEC support at AlgonquinCollege.com. Um, do take a look at our um, website and join the International Student Orientation, which will be held on May 5th and or uh, choose one, May 5th or May 7th, where we will discuss more specific details um, that concern international students specifically. So these are students who have applied for a study permit and are either outside of Canada or inside of Canada. Next slide, please. So the International Education Center uh, support services include, uh, a big one here that may not be mentioned is the self-isolation um, support for students who now require uh, to be uh, quarantined uh, when arriving to Canada. Uh, the, oh, it is here, sorry. It includes our arrival services, so startup and self-isolation. Uh, settlement and integration support and resources, or orientation that I just mentioned, which will be held May 5th or on May 7th. Uh, we offer Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada advice and support. So we have a team of licensed um, immigration uh, student advisors who can provide immigration assistance. And of course, this is for international students uh, only. Uh, guard me health insurance. So international students um, can 
um, uh, who are in Canada would have uh, Guard Me Health Insurance, which is very similar to uh, OHEP that Canadians have. It's not the same, but it does protect you and provide you with uh, medical assistance. Uh, program withdrawal or change of program support, peer tutoring program support. So for international students only, do reach us at IUC support. Again, the email is on this slide. If you're interested in getting a few free hours of peer tutoring support every semester, we have a student mentorship program. Social and cultural events, we have an events calendar where we post all of our activities. So do check it out. It is um, where you'll find all sorts of events and collaborations with other college uh, areas as well. Uh, Canadian financial literacy and immigration works workshops, uh, social insurance number clinics, and volunteer opportunities. Next slide, please. And a great way to find everything that we do is by downloading the iSent app. This is where you will find everything that I've talked about uh, so far in the iSent app. So simply download from your Google Play or App Store. You search for iSent. You do have to choose Canada. Even if you're not in Canada, choose Canada. Register with your preferred email and choose Algonquin College as the institution. And you'll have all of the important details and information at your fingertips. The big one here is event, uh, events and workshops. Uh, pre-arrival uh, services for those of you who are not yet in Canada and so much more including the COVID-19 updates, student orientation, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so next slide please. So the self-isolation and orientation. So self-isolation, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is a support for international students who are uh, requiring assistance from Algonquin College with their uh, self-isolation um, process. There are a lot of changes, as you may or may not be aware, <laughs> with travel to Canada. It can change at any time. So it is important to check this website. You can go to Algonquin College's website and do a search with the magnifying glass and put in self-isolation. You'll find our website, and this is where we will have the most up-to-date information about the self-isolation. You can indicate if you have a plan or you don't have a plan, and you'll find all the support that is available to you. Uh, we have a mandatory student orientation for international students. I've mentioned this, and I'll mention it again, on May 5th or on May 7th please do register. It's very important if you are an international student. The entire orientation um, includes information specifically for international students who are here or in their home country. Next slide, please. Of course, the health insurance that I mentioned earlier is um, for international students who are in Canada. I believe if you're not in Canada, you have the option of opting out. However, if you are planning or anticipating on coming to Canada soon, you may wanna hang on to that health insurance. Um, you should have received an email explaining all of it. Um, if you haven't, there is an email here, iacinsurance at algonquincollege.com, uh, where you can learn more about uh, the opt-out options if you're not in Canada. If you are in Canada, it is absolutely mandatory that you have uh, the health insurance. So again, it's Guard Me. Um, the website is uh, guard.me slash Algonquin College. Uh, this is where you'll learn a lot more about the, the health insurance that is offered to international students. Next slide. There's a Succeed in Canada course that I believe international students would have been enrolled in. And this course is designed specifically to help you uh, integrate and to prepare for Canadian uh, school experience and living in Canada and so much more. Uh, you'll find this in Brightspace. Uh, so it includes Life in Canada, the International Education Centre, Immigration, Working in Canada rules, Algonquin College policies and tips for academic success. 
So of course, being an international student, you may not be familiar with the Canadian culture or how things kind of work. So this course is really designed to help you um, be prepared and uh, be confident and uh, be successful. We want you to be successful. Um, uh, next slide. <laughs> So as mentioned earlier in the iSent app that uh, was mentioned earlier and uh, in a previous slide, we have activities and events that international students can join uh, by visiting our events calendar, uh, which you can access in the iSent app as well. This is where you'll find uh, a lot of um, activities and events for international students. Um, it is populated on an ongoing basis for uh, you can check it today and in a week from now, and you may see that there are more events and activities uh, added to the calendar. So it's a good idea to check this uh, regularly and get involved and engaged. Uh, next slide, please. And of course, as mentioned earlier, the free peer tutoring. So international students, you have to either have applied for a study permit, be in a full-time program, or be in Canada with a study permit and in a full-time program to access free peer tutoring hours. This is a great um, resource uh, for international, well, for any student, of course, but only international students have access to uh, free, free peer tutoring hours through the International Ed Education Center. To access the hours, do um, visit the iSent app that I've mentioned a few times now. <laughs> this is where you'll find um, how to access these hours. You can also send us an email at IAC support at algonquincollege.com as well. Uh, next slide, please. And that's it. So thank you very much. And we hope to see the international students who have joined today at our upcoming international student orientation on May 5th or May 7th. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I love that I sent app, super important, so useful. And I just wanna clarify, Michelle went over some really important things there for our international students that are coming into Canada. Make sure that you're checking out that isolation page and you can check out the main page on the college's website for the COVID information as well. Um, I mentioned the college is closed. Uh, we're all working remotely. Um, obviously the, there are a few doors that are open at the college. Um, for essential workers and, and for programs that need to be taking place. Um, but for international students that are coming um, to Canada and starting your studies, uh, just always make sure to check out that website as, as we've mentioned. Um, and please remember that uh, even though, you know, we're mostly working remotely, um, that the services are still there for you. We have everything available for you remotely. Um, and just make sure that you're reaching out to those uh, websites and to those links, um, and we'll be sure to be able to help you. So we'll move on to our next speaker, Melissa. I'm going to pass it over to you from Academics. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. So my name is Melissa Stadden, and I am the Academic Advising Coordinator at Algonquin College. So today I'm going to be going over sort of your circle of care in the academic area. So when we talk about academic area, we're talking about within your program. So I'm going to ask for the next slide, please. So when it comes to your student success team, your circle of care within your program, you're really going to be interacting with four people on a regular basis. So that would be your professor or your instructor in your class your student success specialist, your program coordinator, and your academic advisor. Next slide, please. The three we're gonna talk about in this quick little session are your academic advisor, your program coordinator, and your student success specialist. I'm gonna explain what each of them are, what they do, and how you can access them. Next slide, please. So your program coordinator can help you with specific questions that you might have about your program. So I've had a, I've been answering a few questions in the Q&A about questions about like laptop requirements or what you need that are specific for your program. Their program coordinator would be a good person to talk to about this. So they can also answer questions about prerequisites, about dropping a specific course and how when it will be offered again and how it would impact your program progression. So what I mean by program progression is, you know, if you decide that you want to drop a course, how would that impact you moving forward? So if that's a prerequisite, requisite for a course, how would, you know, when will it be offered again before you can then take that course that you need to take. So it's always good to talk to your program coordinator before you make any changes to your program uh, schedule. Next slide. 
So every program has a student success specialist. Uh, so and a student success specialist can be um, a, a student success specialist for multiple programs within a school. So they're like your compass for accessing the various support services available to you at Algonquin. So if you're really not sure where to go or where to start, they can help point you in that right in the right direction as they're the subject matter experts on all of the resources that are available to you at Algonquin. As well, if you're thinking about withdrawing from your entire program, so you've gone to a few classes, you've decided that maybe this program isn't the right fit for you, they would be, you would start that process by meeting with your student success specialist. Next slide. And then we have your academic advisor. So academic advisors, and in some, I want to note too, in some smaller programs, your program coordinator and your academic advisor might be the same person. So just if you're looking online and you see the same name, that might not be a mistake or won't be a mistake. <laughs> So academic advisors can help you with setting and achieving your academic goals. They can also help you with questions about program progression as well, similar to the program coordinator. If you find yourself falling off track, an academic advisor can help you with resources and support you to get yourself back on track. And when it comes to your career in your field and those big picture questions about, you know, learning one thing in one class, how do I connect that to my other classes? An academic advisor is a great resource to tap into. And next slide, please. So where to find your student success team? All you have to do is go to algonquincollege.com slash academic success. And then right under the main banner at the top, there's a, a tab that says student success team. And from there, we have different areas for accessing your academic advisor, accessing your student success specialist and your program coordinator. With the student success specialist specifically, you can actually book an appointment with them right online. They have the calendar available right online for you. And next slide. And that is it. So I will be in the Q&A answering questions about um, anything related to your academics. And um, yeah, welcome to Algonquin. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, we're moving right along. We're moving into co-op. We always get a ton of questions. So Sarah, I'll pass it over to you um, and hopefully get some of those questions answered. Perfect, thank you so much and welcome everyone. My name is Sarah Brown Bennett and I am a co-op student advisor with the Cooperative Education Department. Uh, and today I'm just going to go over what co-op is. So if we could move to the next slide, please. We get a lot of questions about what co-op is. Many people have heard um, the term co-op, placement, um, practicum, and they all mean slightly different things. Uh, so if you have registered and signed up for a co-op program, you will be able to participate in a full-time work experience that is paid and related to your field of study. Um, generally, co-ops are a minimum of four lengths in four, sorry, a minimum of four months in length, uh, but depending on your program, you may be able to participate in multiple co-op work opportunities. So once again, to summarize, it is paid full-time work that is related to your field of study. If we can move to the next slide, we have a little chart here that just compares, um, maybe you've participated in co-op in high school, or you've heard those words, field placement, um, here's just the difference here. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that co-op at Algonquin College is separate from your academic studies. So you will have a, a semester or two of classes, and then you'll go out and co-op completely by itself. So your focus will be co-op, and then you'll either return to classes or you will graduate. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just some facts about co-op, if you're considering applying to co-op or if you're wondering what the benefits are, uh, number one is it increases your learning. So you get to take what you learned in the classroom, applied on the job, but you also get the opportunity to increase your employability skills, your interpersonal skills, and those transferable skills that employers will look for after you graduate. Co-op students, uh, based on a study done in 2004, co-op students are also more employable because once again, you've had that opportunity to take what you've learned in the classroom, apply it on the job, and then when you go to graduation, you have a little bit more under your belt and on your resume to present to employers. Uh, and then of course, one of the main benefits our students enjoy is that you get paid while you work uh, and when you gain that experience. Next slide, please. So with co-op, I always like to say that you're involved in a journey uh, and the co-op department is here to support you. So your co-op journey will be a minimum of 12 months in length uh, because we start helping you two semesters before your first scheduled work term. So you'll engage in what we call the prep term, 
uh, where we will help you prepare for co-op, help you uh, develop your resume, your cover letter, help you prepare for interviews and all of that. Then we will move on to your job search term. We will be going to classes, but you'll also be working to secure your co-op work term. Uh, you'll attend, you'll apply for jobs, you'll attend interviews with the ultimate goal, of course, of securing that co-op opportunity. And then finally, you will have your work term once again, where you're working full time. Um, we do consider co-op to be an academic uh, component. So with co-op, you do have to do academic assignments while you're on co-op. But once again, you don't have to manage co-op and classes at the same time. Co-op is competitive, so you do have to put the work into it. It is not a placement. We will not find you a job. We will not match you to a job. But once again, we are here to support you throughout. So if you're struggling, if you're not too sure uh, what to do, or if you need improvement with your cover letter, with your interviews, that is what we are here for. Next slide, please. Uh, to be eligible to participate in co-op, uh, one of the things we have just moved towards is many of our programs would have required you to apply to co-op at the begin at the time you applied to the college. So if you applied through the Ontario Colleges or the International Portal, if your program offers co-op, you may have had the opportunity to apply at that time. But you also must maintain a GPA of 2.7 or higher um, through all of your classes leading up to your co-op work term. You must also complete all of your classes, so you have to complete everything. You can't fail a class or just not attend a class or you won't be able to uh, participate in co-op. And of course, we do ask that you remain in good standing with the college, uh, so you must follow all the conduct policies and make sure that you're representing Algonquin College in a positive way when you're in the work term. Next slide, please. And of course, uh, there are quite a few international students joining us today. And if you are an international student, you absolutely can participate in co-op. You will, however, require a co-op work permit. We will send you all of the information required at the beginning of your prep term, but you will need it. Now, I'm not able to answer any questions about your work term, neither is anyone on the co-op team. So if you are an international student, and you have questions about your work permit or your visa, you will need to address those questions to the International Education Center. And uh, lots of questions we get from international students are, can I work for the gover government? And the answer is absolutely. Many of our students find themselves working within provincial, federal, or municipal governments. So it is a possibility, even if you are an international student. Next slide, please. And that is all I have for you today. So thank you for joining. Uh, and if you have any questions about co-op or your work term, I know there's quite a few questions about uh, the pandemic and how that's looking. You are welcome to email co-op at algonquincollege.com and we will happily answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And our last presenter is Matthew from Information Technology Services. Matthew, I will pass it over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Matthew. I've been working with ITS at Algonquin College uh, for the past three years, uh, but I've worked at the college in various roles since uh, 2010. I've been a student twice over at Algonquin College. Um, every time I decide to leave, I always come back. It's just a, a great place to work and learn and yeah you're gonna love it here um today i'm gonna be talking to you about your various services that are available to you through your network account and uh, the it setup at algonquin college so if we could go to the next slide please so the first thing you will want to do when uh starting learning at algonquin college is retrieve your network account credentials the first step to do that is to go to ACSIS, commonly referred to as AXIS, and you're going to sign in. The process may be a little different depending on if you're a first-time student or a returning student. If you're a first-time student, you'll be providing your student number as the login, and then you'll likely be prompted by three drop-down boxes where you'll enter your uh, birth date. After signing in with that information, you'll be prompted to create a recovery question as well as a password for future signs. 
Returning students should have already set up that password. So when you sign in, you'll be providing your student number again, as well as that password. If you've forgotten that password, uh, you can use the account recovery option by answering the security question you set up. But if you've forgotten the answer to that question, it does happen. Don't be afraid to contact ITS and we can give you a hand with resetting your password. In either case, once you've signed into ACSIS, uh, you'll go into the main view of Axis and you can navigate to the network account info section. And under network account info, you should see your username and password as well as uh, your complete Algonquin College email address. Returning students, once again, the default password information shown in network account info may have changed. Uh, so if you try to sign in with that default information and it's not working, you'll likely need to do a password reset. And if you need help, once again, you can contact ITS. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So. Your network account provides you access to a number of different services at Algonquin College. The big three that you'll likely, likely be accessing every day is Brightspace, your student email, and Office 365. So Brightspace is where most of your course activities will take place. That's where your instructor will post updates about your course and how to complete your assignments or quizzes. Student email is a place where you can communicate with your fellow classmates or communicate with your program coordinator, instructors. Um, really, it's an email that is within the college domain and allows you to easily reach out to the various departments and contacts that you will need to speak with. And lastly, Office 365 is the Office suite of software. So you've likely used Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint in the past. Office 365 is all of those softwares bundled into one service, and you can download and activate that software with your student network account. Uh, the software is available to you for the complete duration of your study at Algonquin College. After you've graduated, you do lose access to the majority of the software within that license, but you will retain your email account. Aside from those three services, there's the other ones that are shown on the screen. I could talk about all of them for more time than I'm permitted today, so I won't go into it in too much detail. But a particular note is VPN services. Some students will need VPN in order to complete their coursework. Uh, your instructor should have instructions for you on how to get access to VPN services if your program requires it. If you don't need it to complete your course, but you still want VPN services, there are options available for you. And uh, I'll touch more on how you can look into those options in just a moment. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? So uh, learning from home will present many unique uh, challenges for our learners. And so ITS want to provide some additional resources to assist you with getting set up in a remote learning environment. Uh, the first column there on the left, study and work from home. Uh, this is a complete uh, page of links to all of the various work from home, study from home resources that we have. So this will help you get set up in Zoom, help you get set up in VPN. It'll help you learn more about Brightspace, help you learn more about what other resources are available to you so that you can get set up and work from home. We also have the ITS knowledge base, which has all of our articles and documentation on everything to do with the Algonquin College ITS setup. Uh, so if you have a question that has to do in particular with your ITS account or the network at the college or printing or what have you, there's likely an article in that knowledge base to assist you. And finally, there is the VPN support resource, a great resource that will take you from beginning to end and getting set up in VPN and then get you connected to the college's VPN so you can continue learning. All the other resources there are a good thing to review, especially the Zoom ones, because you'll be likely using Zoom a lot. Uh, we also are offering a drop-in support session on May 10th uh, to get you set up in your network account right away on the first day of classes. And we can also assist you with any other IT issues you might run into in that drop-in support as well. Go to the next slide, please. 
So my desktop is an interesting service we offer at Algonquin. Uh, the very first thing to note about my desktop is it requires to either be on campus connected to Wi-Fi or by wired cord to the college network, or it requires you to be connected by VPN if you're working from home. Once you are connected to the college's network, either through VPN or uh, by being on premises, you can connect to the My Desktop service, sign in with your network account, and you're provided the opportunity to connect to one of several virtual computer environments. Each computer environment is set up with different types of software that are specific to different programs of study. It's a great resource if you Ha, don't have access to a very powerful laptop, but the software requirements for your course require you to have that type of powerful computer, um, particularly for students in design programs or programs that use CAD. Um, even the law programs require you to have access to certain database softwares that not every laptop is capable of running. My desktop is available to you so that you can still complete that course work. Uh, if you are running into any issues with my desktop, don't be afraid to reach out to ITS. We can gladly assist you. And um, if my desktop's not required for your course, but you'd still like to have access to it, you can request access to VPN from ITS. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this is uh, just a quick uh, breakdown of our hours of availability for ITS. Uh, in the summertime, we're available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can send us an email at any time and we'll respond within our hours of business. And our phone line is available during those times as well. Not every IT issue that you'll encounter can be solved through remote support uh, options though. So we do have a booking page where you can book an appointment with our on-premises staff and they can assist you face-to-face -face and address any computer concerns you may be experiencing. And that's all I have prepared today. Um, if you have any questions about your network account, about how to complete work in a virtual environment, and how to get set up in Brightspace, don't be afraid to reach out to ITS. We're there to assist and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Matthew. Okay, we are going to move into the Q&A question and answer period. I can see that already tons of answers or tons of questions have been answered in the Q&A. So that's really fantastic. I'm glad that everyone's getting the information that they need. Um, I'm actually going to uh, start off with a couple of questions that we have left in here. Um, and um, I'm going to go right back to Matthew because they are ITS related. Um, Matthew. Yes. Uh, oh, sorry, my questions have just shifted here. I'm making sure, oh, a couple of them got answered. Okay, so um, they, we have a couple of questions about VPN specifically. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, how, the, how do they access it? Um, how do they know if they even need to access VPN uh, when they're getting on Zoom or accessing the um, information they need for their programs? Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that? For sure. So uh, VPN isn't required for every program. Um, it's not even necessarily required for every course in programs that do need VPN. Um, your instructor for the particular course that requires a VPN connection should have it posted clearly in Brightspace that you'll need to get VPN set up. Um, they should also have the links on how to get set up in VPN posted in Brightspace as well for you to easily access. Um, that said, if at any point your instructor is referencing a resource that can only be accessed from the on-premises of college network, then during this pandemic time, you'll likely need to get VPN set up and we can assist you with that. Um, at the end of the day, you can ask your instructor first, asking, will I need VPN to complete my coursework? And if they say they don't know or they're not sure, you can ask ITS and we'll have a better idea. Um, and if it's still not clear at the end of all that, uh, we can always go to program coordinator or we can investigate options. But uh, someone, either your instructor or ITS, should know if you need VPN. Okay, perfect. And uh, just to be super clear, if they do need VPN and they just need some assistance with uh, making sure that they have that um, hooked up correctly, they can just email ITS? Absolutely. 
Okay, perfect. Thank you. So what we'll try to do here is get the um, ITS email in the chat. Um, and I'll just remind everybody and um, make sure that you're looking at that chat function because we've been posting links throughout um, this webinar uh, with all that information for you. And again, uh, we don't want you to feel overwhelmed. Please remember that the presentation from today is going to be housed on the orientation website um, as well as available on YouTube. Um, and so all those links that were in there, you'll be able to have access to them and, um, and, and get that information. Um, and again, please feel free to email any of us um, if you're having further issues. Um, okay, so I'm just moving on to the next question here. Um, we have, as a student in an accelerated program, can I still get an AC card and U pass? Also, are any dental services covered as a student? And finally, do we have access to Brightspace now or only three days before the class? So there's a few questions in here, I think all really useful. Um, I believe that this is an international student because um, we're talking about uh, getting the UPASS and the AC card, which Mara mentioned. Um, so maybe what I'll do is start with Michelle, if I can come over to you, and if you can just speak a little bit about um, an international student requiring um, a UPASS or the um, AC card, and um, if it's the same process or if it would be different. I think it's the same process, so I'm actually not 100% familiar. I believe a student could opt out of UPASS if they're not in Canada. Um, as for the dental, though, I thought I would just uh, quickly mention that because the Guard Me Health Insurance does not cover dental or it covers only emergency. So you would have to reach out to the um, Students Association to learn more about a dental plan for international students who are in Canada. Um, the AC card, I believe they can apply for it online. Uh, they can opt out of UPASS if they're not in Canada. Um, yeah. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Michelle. So maybe I'll just pass it over to Mara as well if you want to address the AC card and UPASS. You mentioned it in your presentation, um, but we'll just go over it again for students who missed that portion. For sure, yeah. So if you uh, require an AC card or you pass for the spring term, you can upload a photo online uh, at algonquincollege.com slash AC card. Um, and once your photo is approved, you would receive an email with details about um, how to get your card. Um, the, and, and as the UPASS, you can opt, uh, students participating in remote learning can opt out of the UPASS program uh, in access. Excellent, thank you. And Melissa, can I ask you, are you aware, can they access now on Brightspace or uh, they'll still have to wait a little bit? Yeah, they are still gonna have to wait a little bit because um, pro like professors and coordinators are still setting up their courses for um, the spring. So I believe, I believe every, Matthew, you might be able to address this for, for Brightspace specifically, but I believe it is three days um, that the courses will be opened up. Um, I'm correct, but I might be wrong. <laughs> so Brightspace access should be provided to students by the time um, timetables are available, but the mm -hmm. actual course access itself is set by the instructor. Usually yeah. it's day one when the courses become unlocked. Some instructors unlock it a little bit earlier, but the majority are day one. And if you're lucky, maybe a little bit earlier. <laughs> Okay, yeah. awesome. And just a really good follow up question uh, we have here from Yi. Uh, in terms of, you know, when they do get onto Brightspace and they're starting their classes and it's going to be on Zoom, um, will those Zoom links just be housed, you know, right in the in their Brightspace and, and how will they access those? Uh, Melissa, again, I'm going to come to you. I don't know um, if you've connected with those program coordinators and, and how they're setting that up. So program coordinators will be sending, uh, specifically for the program orientation, all program coordinators will be sending an email to students uh, probably this week or early next week with information on how to access their program orientation. I am giving program coordinators an email list of their students use with both their Algonquin email address, but also the email address they use to apply. So if you're not yet accessing your Algonquin email address, you should be getting it to your other email too. So don't stress too much about that. Uh, but when it comes to your specific classes, uh, once you're in Brightspace, they, pro program coordinators and professors do have the option to uh, make a Zoom classroom within the course in Brightspace. So once you're in Brightspace 
and your professor has sort of gone over how that course is going to run, they'll be communicating with you and giving you all the information you need to be able to be successful in your course. But if you're ever hesitant, once you find out who your professor is, or you, know, you can always uh, email the program coordinator now um, to ask any questions. Perfect, thank you. Uh, I think that's really useful. So everyone, you know, just make sure that you're getting on to Brightspace um, and then the information will come. Um, okay, so our next question is from Kevin. Will there be a future event for a job fair on campus um, or maybe, uh, you know, a webinar event? Um, so, um, you know, we do have a uh, job fair. There's um, different ones happening for different schools on the campus um, for student support services. Uh, we do have a job fair that takes place, um, I believe it's usually in October, I would have to double check. Um, we can uh, take a look and, and try to get that posted in the chat. Um, but again, you know, those larger events that usually would happen on campus, we'll certainly still be holding them um, if we're able and they'll just be done remotely rather than on campus. So make sure to look for that. Um, and I'll just take the opportunity now to let everybody know that uh, if you do go to the student services um, page, you will see um, you know, a bunch of different information there, um, but along with that is uh, an events tab. Um, and within there are all of these fantastic events that you'll be able to attend uh, for the majority of the time. Uh, they are free for you as an Algonquin College student. Um, so again, we talk about you know, resources and, and making sure that you're engaging and um, really taking part in those things that are available to you. Uh, so make sure that you're checking out that website. And um, you know, a few of us have mentioned throughout this webinar that uh, while we can't always be on campus, um, events are still taking place online. Um, and so make sure that you're still getting engaged and, and meeting fellow classmates and, um, and people with you know, like-minded interests because um, it is really important and it's part of your college experience. Um, okay, I'm gonna move on to the next question. Uh, I want to know if we will continue to use the same webinar for the following other sessions. Um, so just be sure to know that uh, this webinar was for College Essentials. Um, if you are attending, you know, let's say the International Education Center's um, AC Day 1 or the college's AC Day 1, make sure that you're using the specific link for that specific event, okay? So um, there's always going to be uh, different links for different events and um, you know, check out how you registered for that event. Um, and certainly you would get um, that Zoom link or, or you know, that webinar or that meeting link uh, within that specific uh, registration information, okay? So they're not always the same, they're going to be different. Okay, moving on to the next, can you explain briefly if and when reading week is? Um, I've only got experience with university students, so I'm wondering how it works for the college. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but uh, maybe Melissa, if I can come to you, uh, you might know the academic calendar a little bit better than I do. I'm going to look it up really briefly. It's yeah. usually, so there's, there's seven weeks. I know it's a 717, so that's the way our model works. So it's seven weeks of classes, followed by a week break than the remaining seven weeks of classes. Now, most programs have a reading week and the reading week is similar to uh, university reading week. There's no scheduled classes or any work that is due that week. Um, but all that to say is there are a very limited, I can't, I don't know them off the top of my head, but you're, if you are in one of these very limited programs that don't have a reading week, your program coordinator will definitely let you know very far in advance so that you know that you, you know, are not taking a break that week. But I would say 95% of the full-time programs at Algonquin have that reading week um, for that eighth week. So I believe in the spring it's beginning of july if i'm not no june i'm get, let me do some math and i'll, I'll put it in the chat what the <laughs> what perfect, it is perfect <laughs> thank you but important to know that um there is a reading week um in in both semesters right so as she says it's the um 717 um and so you'll see uh you know once you get um, into your classes and and looking at all the information, mental health awareness is extremely important at Algonquin College, and we think that rest time um, is crucial for your studies. Um, so certainly, there's a reading break in each one, um, so you can look forward to that. Okay, next question: 
Can you please tell me the difference between business management and business program? Okay, so I think this is a really specific question. Um, Melissa, I'm, I'm coming to you again. I don't know if, if okay. you can address it again. If, um, if not right now, then maybe we can put something in the chat for um, later and for um, the student to be able to connect with somebody. Um, but I think they're probably just trying to figure out, you know, which program they should be getting into. Um, so I'll pass it over to you again, please. So business management and then business. So there is business admin or there's business core. Business core, so it really depends on where you're asking that question from, like is it the business admin or the business core? But if you're asking business core, then that is the business program starts as one whole program in the first, I believe it's the first level. And then I believe it's after the second level or after your first year, that's when you start to really hone in on, is it going to be management and entrepreneurship that you're going to focus in on, or is it going to be uh, marketing? Um, so there's different areas that you can sort of then decide that that is the, the program that you want to focus in on. So that's, I hope that answers your question, but I'll also put in, I'll go into the Q&A with that to a student, or the student who asked the question, and I'll provide some specific uh, links for them that they can contact the program coordinator. Exactly. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, okay, Matthew, I'm coming back to you. A very direct question. We've mentioned it, but we'll go over it again because I think it's important. Um, how do we access Brightspace? Right. So accessing Brightspace is a two-step process. First, you'll need to get your network account credentials from AXIS or ACSIS. Website for ACSIS is acsis.algonquincollege.com. You'll sign in with your student number and either your date of birth if it's your first time accessing the site or a password that you set yourself if you're returning to the site. Once you signed in, you'll go to network account info and retrieve your default network network account credentials. Uh, if you're a returning student, it's possible you changed your default password. So if you have changed it, you'll just need to remember that password or you'll have to reset it if you've forgotten it. Once you have your network account credentials, you can go to brightspace.algonquincollege.com and you can sign in with your network account information. And at that point, you're signed into Brightspace. Now we uh, touched on this earlier, your courses may not be available to view yet. Uh, they'll likely become available closer to the start of classes. Um, but if you do see a bunch of courses in your view of Brightspace and they're all colored and lit up and looks like they're, you're able to click on them, then go ahead and give them a click. You can't really break anything in Brightspace, so <laughs> peruse it at your leisure. Perfect, thank you. Um, our next question is from Chelsea. Um, a great question. Again, I think that um, it's certainly up to um, each professor, but Chelsea's asking if all the classes online uh, will be a live teacher. Um, Melissa, I'm coming back to you. I don't know, um, again, if you've had these conversations or um, if you've heard amongst the mill, um, you know, what that plan looks like. Uh, really, it's gonna it's it's what you've said. It's it's up to the individual instructor as to whether they're going to be running what they were what they refer to it as synchronous or asynchronous. So synchronous would be they're running a live class that you're expected to be watching the class while it's being run. And there's going to be probably some asynchronous activities, which could be they're recording a lecture and you can watch it uh, when you can, or there might be assignments that you need to do within a certain time period, but not at a specific time. You know, I do. I all instructors and professors recognize that there are a vast number of students that are going to be learning um, and connecting with their classes remotely from potentially very different time zones. So I know that they are really making an effort to be accommodating with students that are not, uh, say, you know, up at 9 a.m. our time. Uh, it might be a completely different time there. So I know there are going to be a combination, but it really depends on what that individual uh, instructor or professor is uh, deciding for their class. Excellent. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm scrolling. Oh, also, sorry, yeah. I found out when the uh, the reading week in the spring is um, June 28th is when it starts. So it's that week uh, with uh, Canada Day, which is great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Um, I'm scrolling through here, and there's a great question uh, just related to the pandemic, and you know I think it's important that we address it. Um, so from Alex, and thank you for the question, Alex, is there a plan in place for reopening the campus? For example, if the province lifts restrictions mid-semester, will students be required to begin attending uh, classes in person? Um, so Alex, you can imagine, you know, um, the entirety of our colleges uh, looking toward this and trying to figure out the best solution. Um, I'm going to ask that um, our event support team uh, put the COVID 
um, website in the chat again. Um, I really want to make it clear for everybody. This is what you want to be checking out. Um, any updates that uh, pertain to, you know, Ontario restrictions um, and what the college is looking to do, this is where that information will be. Um, so I can't speak specifically to a plan that's currently in place. We're working with the province, uh, you know, with the medical professionals, uh, with other colleges to see what best practices are. Um, and then obviously that information will be posted on the COVID website. So just be sure to be checking that. Um, you know, we've mentioned already, we're all working remotely as well. Um, and so our, our most important thing is that we're all staying safe. Um, and so we will do that as long as we need. Um, and just make sure to check out that COVID site for any updates that are coming up. Okay, um, our next question um, is asking if students are allowed to record um, their online lecture. Um, again, I'm, I'm gonna bring it back to Melissa. Um, I think that um, you know it's similar answers as to before, but um, I'll pass it over to you, thank you. Yeah, again, it's it's ultimately going to be up to the professor um, to determine if they want their lectures to be recorded. Um, and it's always best to ask permission um, because, you know, at the end of the day, in, we want to be able to provide as much information and, and be as, as readily available to our students as possible. But of course, if an instructor decides that they don't want their lecture recorded, then that's ultimately up to them. So be sure to talk to the, the instructor at the beginning of class. And if you do have, I think I saw another question down there about a doctor's appointment um, and catching up on work, let your, let your instructor know uh, ahead of time if you have a, something scheduled during class time and hopefully they'll be able to make whatever accommodations they can for you. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, so we hit a couple of questions there. So that's really important. Um, so good to know. Um, okay, so I'm just looking at time. We have about five minutes left, so I'm going to go through a few more questions, um, and then um, we'll have our, our closing remarks. And again, just a reminder, uh, make sure that you're going to that orientation webpage. This PowerPoint will be there with all the information. Um, and then I'm just going to say before I forget, everyone needs to remember that AC Day 1 um, for the college is on May 10th, so make sure that you're registering. Um, and for our international students, as Michelle has mentioned, um, that is happening on May 5th and May 7th, I believe. Um, so again, we can get some links in the chat there so that people have access to that information and make sure that you're registering. Um, this is a, a wonderful first step, attending this webinar um, and getting this initial information. Um, and as you move forward, just make sure that you're still attending um, the services that are available to you because uh, it'll really set you up for success. Um, okay, so I'm going to head to the next question here. Uh, when will the next semester start? Will we have a long summer vacation between two semesters? Um, okay, so ye, I would take a look. You can go onto the registrar's office website um, and there's an academic calendar there. There isn't a ton of time in between. Um, again, I feel like Melissa is taking a look at a calendar right now. Um, so I'm just going to ask if she happens to have that information. And if not, not a problem. Um, we can post it in the chat. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll post that in the chat, um, but um, in between- I have it now. Years... Oh, perfect. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so the, uh, the, the spring reading break is from, like I said, June 28th to July 2nd, so that week. And then the start of classes um, for the um, next summer, or like the spring or the summer intake, I believe is- um, do, do, do July intake. I'm just looking at it now. It looks like it's registration. Uh, okay. No, I'm actually not finding it. Give me one moment though. <laughs> okay, no problem. No problem. So, um, you will, we'll make sure to get that info and, and we'll put it in the chat there for you. Um, I I've noticed, you know, since, uh, we're coming to an end here, we're getting quite a few more questions. I'm going to ask the panel, if you are able, if you can just take a look in the question and answer, tab and answer any questions that are left um, as best we can um, as we start to finish up here. Um, and so I'm just going to take this question that I've been looking at for a while and I wanna make sure we get to it. Um, ah, they keep switching around. Um, okay, so we're asking about BYOD, okay? Um, so most of you may have seen when you log on to access or, you know, you've looked at your program online, it says BYOD, this is bring your own device. Um, so this is a personal device that you would, um, have for yourself. 
Um, and the, this student is asking if the college can provide a laptop. Um, and um, I believe that the answer is no, you'd want to get your own laptop, but I just want to make sure that I have that information correct. And if anybody um, has an answer, if there are services available on campus where they would be able to access something like this, if you can just raise your hand and I'll come to you. Um, if not, then we will try to find a little bit more information about that um, and make sure that it's available. Yeah, Matthew, I'll come to you. Thank you. So, um... ITS does have loaner laptops for students, but there are a couple of requirements to access the device. Um, the first one is you need to be a part of a BYOD program. There's a specific technology fee in your tuition fees for BYOD programs that cover this loaner laptop if you should need it. Uh, but the second requirement is that you have to already have your own device that is damaged or in need of repair. And if you can show us that that device is off for repair, we'll then provide you a laptop to cover the period where you're without a device. Uh, unfortunately, the college just doesn't have the inventory of computers to provide every student with a laptop. It's just not possible. Uh, as an alternative though, um, there's a lot of very budget friendly laptop devices available on the market these days. And using one of these more budget-friendly devices in conjunction with our My Desktop service will give you access to an advanced computer in a virtual environment. So you can still complete all of your coursework using more powerful software uh, while not really impacting your wallet all too much. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Matthew. Um, okay, so it's 1030, so we're gonna wrap up. Um, you know, we've answered the questions as best we can, and I'm so happy that you have all been so engaged um, and asking these questions. Um, I'm going to repeat one more time, make sure that you are getting yourself to the orientation website. This is where this PowerPoint is going to live. Um, and all of those links that are in there uh, will be accessible to you. Um, there's a few questions in the Q&A I see that are very specific about you know, specific programs um, or you know, not being able to access your internet. Um, you know, a very specific ITS question that pertains to you. Uh, so again, make sure that you're reaching out to the um, appropriate department um, and we'll certainly be able to help you and, and make sure that you're ready to go. Um, so with that, I will say thank you to all of our panelists. Um, I'm always very excited. This is, you know, one of our first events for our new students. Um, and we're always just so thankful that you have all joined in um, and that uh, you're setting yourself up for success. We wanna make sure that you understand we're here for you, even though it's remotely, um, all the services are available. Uh, so make sure that you know, you're reaching out um, and we will certainly get back to you uh, with an answer that you need. So thank you everybody. And we will see you all at AC day one.